If it walks like a, qu a duck and quacks like a duck, it ain't a damn mongoose. And in this particular case, all that means is that there is legitimate cause for suspicion. Because The MV Podcast. My name is Dale, and today we are talking about Stephen A. Smith not believing a word that Otani said. Check it out. On a story making waves throughout the sports world the last couple of days, it involves gambling tied to baseball, specifically to a former interpreter of Los Angeles Dodgers uh, star player, pitcher, and hitter, Shohei Otani, the highest paid professional athlete in North American history. The interpreter named Ipe Mitsuhara, was fired Wednesday after it came to light that at least $1 million in wire transfers was sent from Otani's bank account to a bookmaking operation. Now, multiple sources have told ESPN that Mitsuhara, the longtime friend and interpreter for Otani, yet again, I'm saying that, incurred the gambling debts to a Southern California bookmaker. That bookmaker was under a federal investigation at the time. Initially, a spokesman for Otani told ESPN he had transferred the funds to cover Mitsuhara's gambling debt. The spokesman presented Mitsuhara to ESPN reporter Tisha Thompson for an interview Tuesday night, a 90-minute interview. During that conversation, Mitsuhara explained his side of the story, saying he asked Otani last year to pay off his gambling debt. Multiple sources said that debt ballooned to at least $4.5 million eventually. He also said he'd previously placed bets and assumed they were legal. Mitsuhara also assured Tisha Thompson that Shohei Otani had no involvement whatsoever, does not gamble whatsoever, and that the funds were used to cover his own losses, saying, quote, obviously he wasn't happy about it and said he would help me out to make sure I never do this again. He decided to pay it all for me. I want everyone to know Shohei Otani had zero involvement in betting. I want to, uh, people to know I did not know this was illegal. I learned my lesson the hard way. I will never do sports betting ever again. I never bet on baseball. That's 100%. I knew that rule. We have a meeting about that in spring training. Look, ladies and gentlemen, we know what this story is about. It's about whether or not Shohei Otani bet on baseball. That's really what this is about. Nobody gives a damn about an interpreter. But before I get into that even more so, however, as ESPN prepared to publish the story on Wednesday, the same Otani spokesman disavowed Mitsuhara's account and said Otani's lawyers have issued the following statement. In the course of responding to recent media inquiries, we discovered that Shohei has been the victim of a massive theft, and we are turning the matter over to the authorities. End quote. But earlier... Mitsuhara told ESPN that Otani had no knowledge of his gambling debts and that Otani had not transferred money to the bookmaker's associate. Which brings me back to the big question. What are we to believe here? This is about whether or not Shohei Otani gambled on baseball. Slice it any way you want to. Let's cut the BS. We don't give a damn about the interpreter. The interpreter no longer works for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Who cares? That ain't what this is about. This is about whether or not Shohei Otani was really helping his friend out or was his friend providing cover for Shohei Otani. We don't know the facts. We don't know all the facts. We have to research it. Nobody is casting aspersions on Shohei Otani this way. As far as I'm concerned, innocent until proven guilty. That's the American way. I don't believe in guilt until proven innocent, like folks try to do to you in a court of public opinion. But I will acknowledge this. If it walks like a, qu a duck and quacks like a duck, it ain't a damn mongoose. And in this particular case, all that means is that there is legitimate cause for suspicion baseball. And you know when we're talking gambling and we're talking baseball, you know exactly where I'm going. Pete Rose, 1989. Bartlett Giamatti bans Pete Rose from baseball for life for gambling on the sport as a manager for the Cincinnati Reds. I have been on the record for years. Pete Rose should be forgiven. There are murderers that have been let, that, that have been let, let go from prison sooner than Pete Rose has been forgiven. You've got to be kidding me. I've said that many, many times. But baseball 
is hard and strong on that rule. There is no gambling in the sport. You got two $500,000 wire transfers that occurred last September and October. We ultimately learned that four and a half million dollars was compromised from Shoei Atani's account. That was his boy. That was somebody he trusted. I get that. An interpreter that's been with you since you arrived in America to play in the Major League Baseball. I get that. All I'm going to say is this. I got a bunch of boys. Very, very tight. I love them. I'm around them all the time. None of them have access to my bank account. In fairness to Otani, he's not an American citizen, even though he can speak English. He has an interpreter for a reason. Maybe Mitsuhara is the one that was going to the bank communicating on his behalf or whatever. I don't know. All I know is this. It's legitimate to ask questions. It's legitimate for Tisha Thompson. It's it's legitimate for Jeff Passan. It's legitimate for every baseball reporter, every investigative reporter, anybody covering the world of sports, is specifically Major League Baseball to probe deeper. And it's also necessary for Rob Manfred and Major League Baseball to investigate this even further with the level of depth and adroitness it requires. Because this is a story you got to get to the bottom of. It wouldn't be that necessary if you had shown more leniency to P. Rose. But since you did it, since you want to be so rigid and hardcore and unforgiving, well, then your stance is your stance. Your standard is your standard. Now, Mr. Harris says he never bet on baseball. He's got a gambling issue. He confessed it to the Guys in the locker room for the Los Angeles Dodgers, they were like, all right, we feel bad for you. You're a gambling addict. So what? What that got to do with us? Then he had to confess. Well, you know what? It sort of implicates Otani because I asked him to help pay off my debt. But now eyebrows are raised because we've recognized the position of Major League Baseball. And again, since you want to be so rigid and hardcore, now you have to be consistent. Get to the bottom of it. Find out what happened. I know it ain't popular, considering the money they just invested in Shohei Otani. Ten years, $700 million, although 97% of it was deferred. It's still $700 million. They're going to owe that man. And he's the biggest star in baseball globally, not just nationally. I understand what this means. And there is no evidence whatsoever, no indication whatsoever, that he is guilty of such a thing as gambling, period, let alone gambling on the sport of baseball. But the fact of the matter is we don't know. We don't have all the evidence. And until we do, we have to probe and scratch and claw and search. Because this is the most taboo thing to ever be associated with baseball. Gambling. Ain't that what we've been told? I believe it's what we've been told. Just saying. Ohio Tiny held a press conference. I mean, you all know what the whole issue is. His interpreter, bet on the games, and then the $4.5 million debt was somehow wiped out. So everybody knows that the interpreter is not rich. And Shohei Tani is rich. He just signed a contract for $700 million. So that money also came out of Otani's account. So, most people would think that the person who bet on the game was Otani. Because why would he give this guy $4.5 million? But I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Stephen A. Smith. All right, not believing Otani when he came out and said that he had nothing to do with this. He didn't even know that this was happening. All right, now before you say that Stephen A. Smith did believe him. He wouldn't be asking for a probe if he did believe him. He wouldn't be saying that if it looks like a duck then, all right? And his whole tone of the podcast, all right, was kind of pointing, almost pointing fingers at Otani to say that he has some connection. It's, it's almost as if Stephen A. Smith wants to see Otani go down. Baseball already said that they're going to do an investigation on this. 
so there's no real reason for us to be telling baseball to do more of what they're actually going to go and do but but i think that you know like any other scandal and comparable to a scandal in the nba and not a peep is coming out anywhere nobody is saying if it looks like this or looks like that it should be that then i think that we should be quiet about otani also and just report the facts and that's what i thought that that stephen a was doing when i started watching this video but then as he got further and further into it i could tell that he's kind of you know pushing well he's clearly pushing for major league baseball to look further into this even though shohei clearly clearly detailed that he did not do any of this i don't know how the investigators are going to find more information about this but this but i'm not on the side who's trying to find who's trying to see shohei go down because that would probably be the end of baseball as we know it and for those of you who say you know that if he did this wrong thing then he should pay for it i'm sure you could tell if somebody's trying to throw a game and i have not heard you know that he's been throwing games but uh that's about it so i'm gonna